Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another RMA Fire tutorial. It's been a minute. Sorry, I have been like slammed with work, um, trying to figure out um, shifting a lot of things in my career to become more of a director. Um, but that said, I have something really exciting. Um, been using this quite a bit on my latest projects. It's the NPM solver that is absolutely incredible and i'm gonna be teaching you guys a bunch about it but today let's take a look at shaky balls <laughs> um, so let me just organize my stuff here um the first thing is creating our collider all right so let's have a look here let me enable my grid um so we need to build out the geometry, but I found since the NPM solar is so new that it's nice to come here and type NPM and you will see the, the configurations that are already pre-built for us. So I wanted to play with um, soft bodies. So let's enable it and let's see what this gives us. Usually when you load NPM, it takes a little bit of time to load, but off the bat, you'll see that it will give you this. So this is the initial setup that we get from NPM. So we see that we've got the pig head. It becomes the NPM source here, and it has a collision on the inside, and then pinpoints to the animation. And then this is our animation right here. Okay, so to recreate this first part, and we'll go one step at a time, let's recreate the first part. So I created a sphere and I added a transform and moved it slightly. Then we have a mirror and I created a Boolean to make sure that I don't have inner penetration. So in the Boolean, you want to enable A and B so that we can select the, AM, the, the, the outside group here and delete it. Then we have a mirror so that we can have the mirror, but you will see that now on the inside it's clean. So what I wanna do after that is subdivide it so that we can have more, info, more geometry and then fuse it so that they're completely together and they're fused in the, in the middle. Then we're gonna create VDB from polygons and you'll see that it's a pretty low res mesh. And then I'm converting this to polygons. And the last thing that I did was adding a meta ball with a magnet so that I could um, sort of control the top part of it. So if we have, if we drop down a meta ball, you'll see that you can basically sort of place it where you want. And with the magnet, you can, um, control the transformation. So this is gonna give us our basic shape, right? So we're just gonna call this out, basic shape. Um, so before uh, we make it the an NPM solver, I mean, an NPM source, What I want to do is move this a little bit here so it doesn't interrupt us. So we just looked at the basic shape, right? We have our basic shape and we want to make sure that we have this source here. So we have this sphere, which is literally the same sphere but I, I just made it a little bit smaller because this is gonna be the inside of our balls. This is gonna be like our collision. So after that, I transformed it and the transform is the same as this transform here. And I mirrored it. So if we isolate that and we look at what that's giving us, it's basically the inside. Okay, so when we turn that into a VDV, we get our collision. 
this is the inside that is going to collide with our main stuff and then I had a mistake here where like we have an animation and the animation we're gonna apply to everything but I'm gonna disable the npm source for now because it gets slow once I enable it I'm gonna look at what we have here and what we have here is just this and it's basically just animated with the sin function and it is pretty much the same thing that is here the same animation on the sin function so if we play this we essentially have a the skin and the inside of the balls <laughs> and um we're gonna just connect that here so let's talk about what I'm doing on this portion. If I enable the NPM source, well, actually I'll, I'll show you guys before I enable the NPM source. What I'm doing is I'm coloring it black and you guys have seen me do this trick a lot of times. I'm placing this sphere here and then transferring that color so that the color is going to drive the drag of the balls. The bottom part is going to have less drag and the top part is going to be like more solid. All right. So this right here pins those points to the animation and this right here animates it and, and we have that base. Okay. So let's go ahead and enable the NPM source. And the NPM source is essentially going to turn it into points and inside the NPM source, you'll see that it's bit, uh, the material preset which is kind of what it what the balls are made from we made i made a jello and there's a bunch of other materials and we'll talk about snow and a bunch of other stuff later but jello and then you can choose the behavior so to make this jello thing i, I made it um i made it elastic and if we compare they're gonna be very very similar the only thing that i changed is the density I played a bit with the stiffness and but I just basically wanted to see how accurate um, it comes out of the box and it's actually really really amazing the one thing that you have to make sure is that when you duplicate an npm source you need to make sure that the npm container that we're using which is this one right here has been dragged so so that it's pointing to it to the container so we have the source. We haven't changed anything from the default. We have our animation. And then when we play, the animation is going to play with this. All right. Um, and then what the next thing that I did was created this collider. So that doesn't come on the original setup, but it's pretty simple. If we look here, we'll see that I just animated this sphere sort of like going like this I'm sort of like moving it around a little bit so we play you'll see that it's a very fairly simple animation I basic I just keyframed it and then on the npm collider if you if you go here and do npm collider you'll notice that I only changed the collider type to animated rigid. That's the only thing that's changed. And you want to make sure that the NPM collider is also pointed to the container. So you, if we were to do it from scratch, we connect it here. We do um, animated rigid and we select the container and that's it. Then you connect it to the second input and the first input is the container, which I didn't change at all. It's the same one. Okay. And then let's check out what we get. Oh, but let me show you guys the, the, the trick I did with the drag before I play. So you, you can see here that we are essentially we're just transferring that red color so you can control how much of the balls are affected right and we go in here 
inside the npm solver it works the same as pops or anything so you can put a pop drag and i added the air resistance which is here called air resist and i fit that between zero and a very high number and then i multiplied it by the color c.r so what that's going to do is it's going to just make the stuff that is red um have a lot more drag so it's the drag is going to be way higher than the black so the black stuff as you can see has quite a lot more movement to it um and the red is has a lot of drag And this actually looks better than my tests because I had my animation on the wrong part. But now we can see that it really affects it quite well. It's like playing with grains on asteroids. You can see that they are well, the result now, it's it's a lot more aggressive when I add animation to my actual skin. So let's revert that and put it here. In this case, we wouldn't really need this, but let's just keep it like that. But it's cool to see that we can add that after and just add the animation to the inside of the balls in that case like you could literally have have them shake up and down or do whatever you want if you place the transform down here so right here we're getting pretty much exactly what i was doing earlier and you can see like this is actually pretty low resolution but holds up quite well So I'm going to cache this. Well, not cache, I'm just gonna let it roll and then I'll show you guys so you know. You can see that it holds up pretty well in terms of like the skin holds up pretty well. And what I'm doing and the only really, the I didn't really change too many things. The only thing that I changed was the time scale and disabling the ground plane because it automatically, it's gonna come with this ground plane, but you wanna turn that off unless you can play with it and, and see what you get with the pig head colliding with it. It's actually quite interesting. Um, but I just wanted to turn it off and set my time scale so that it feels way more slow mode, slow motion. And then I'm adding an object, object merge here, pulling in this shape right here. So it's the same thing as if we were to connect this here so our original geometry and then we want to freeze our simulation on the first frame so you can see that it's frozen no movement and with a point deform we connect the geometry on the first input which is static which is your initial mesh before before connecting it to the mpc solver so before we turn it into points, we have the first frame of the simulation and then we have the simulation on the end. And what this does is that it's going to deform our skin based on the movement of those points. So you can see that the skin is going to hold up with, so it's basically like we're transforming the original mesh uh, I'm driving it with the simulation. It's, it's like uh, the cloth capture. You guys have seen me do those tricks before. And then we're using the same gag that we did at the beginning, which is that meta ball with the magnet to essentially just scale down the core of the, of the balls and pulling them up a little bit. See, you can pull them up here. Then I added a color to them. And last but not least, uh, so that you guys are not confused, I have my main animation. 
and I added a carve so that we could really see what the collider is doing. And then I just added like two ears to it. So it looks like a, like this little devil. And finally a transform with the, with this expression that you guys can copy, which essentially puts this transform on the center of the geometry so that I could like just rotate it at the end. So it's kind of looking at us kind of funny. Um, and place the camera here and that's essentially what I showed you guys. So I hope you guys like this small tip. I'm going to be back with more tips, NPM tips. And thank you so much for watching.